Okay, let's talk about the anatomy of a workbook. And the first thing I want you to notice is that the name of the file you're working on is always displayed in the top center section of the screen right here. Now you can see at the moment as, as we have opened a new workbook that Excel has called it book one by default. Now if we were to open another workbook, that book would be called book two. Shortly we'll be covering how to rename the workbook to something more meaningful. Okay, and the next thing I want to draw your attention to is this large area right across the top just here. This is called the ribbon. Now the ribbon is a really useful tool that allows us to do some really cool things in Excel. Now the ribbon is split into different sections as you'll see. We have home, we have insert, insert, we have page layout, formulas, data and so on. Uh, we'll cover each of these particular elements in more detail as the course progresses. But just for now I just want you to remember that this section across the top is called the ribbon. Righty-ho, the next thing we're going to have a quick look at is the Quick Access Toolbar. Now that's this small area at the top left-hand side of the screen just here. Now at the moment, all we can see is the Excel icon, the Save icon, the Undo and Redo buttons. I'm going to show you shortly how, you're going to, how you can add more icons to that, the things that you use all the time to save you having to go and navigate through the ribbon to find them. The next thing we're going to look at is at the top right hand side of the screen. Now we have five little icons just up here and the first one is a question mark and that is the help function for Microsoft Excel. You'll see from the little pop-up box that's just appeared underneath it that it will give you a tool tip to tell you what this particular icon does. And also in brackets we can see F1. And for the keyboard shortcut junkies out there, F1 is the keyboard shortcut to save you having to scroll around with your mouse to get to the help function. Just hit F1 on your keyboard and you're straight into Microsoft Help. In this first section of lectures we'll, we'll briefly touch on Microsoft Excel Help and have a look how that can uh, help us. Okay, next icon along is to do with the ribbon display and we can either auto hide the ribbon, show tabs, show tabs and commands. I recommend leaving that exactly as it is at the moment just so you always have the exact view that I have and uh, that will save any confusion a little later on. Okay, the next button along is the minimize button. Now at the moment we can see that this is expanded to fill the whole screen. If we were to click the minimize button, it makes it disappear down here to our, our menu bar down the bottom. Now we haven't lost our work, we haven't closed Excel, it's still there. And if we hover over it there, you can see that it's popped back up a little picture. So we can either click on it to bring it back or just double click and we can we'll get our worksheet back okay the next one along is the the restore down now if we click this it will shrink the size of the screen that we're looking at so if you prefer not to work with Excel occupying the whole of your desktop you can use this and it will shrink it down now if you want to make that a little narrower you can just come to the right hand side here till the arrow changes left click and drag in or drag out uh, you can do the same from this side so you can left click drag in drag out if you just want to make it taller or shorter come down the bottom here left click move down move up or if you want to move in both axes at the same time just go up one of the corners and do that now Excel will remember exactly that size and that position on the screen so if we now go to maximize so we expand the view to our full screen and then we choose to restore down it will go back to exactly the settings we just selected okay let's go back to full screen and finally the little x up the corner is to close now don't worry if you've made any changes to your workbook and you hit close accidentally you'll get a pop-up message that asks you do you want to save this file so don't worry if you accidentally click it you'll have an option to get out of it in case you didn't mean to click it the next area of the screen we'll look at is the formula bar and that's this area right here. Now as its name suggests this is a place where you can type formulas but you can also use it to input your data be it dates, text, numbers, whatever you want. So there are essentially two ways of entering data into Excel either directly in the cell 
which we'll come to shortly, or in the formula bar, which is this area right here. Don't worry too much about what we're going to do with this at the moment, just remember that this area is called the formula bar. Okay, the next area is the worksheet area, and that's this area highlighted just here. This is the main area that we'll be working in and entering our data and our formulas into, and it's made up of lots and lots of little cells, and we'll cover cells now. So, cells. Excel is made up of thousands and thousands of cells, and cells are these little rectangles that you can see just here. Now, a cell is referred to by its column letter and its row number. So, if we were to select a cell at random here, we can see that th this cell is at the intersection of column K and row 6. And you can see that just here in the name box. So similarly, if we were to click over here, we can see we're at the intersection of column double A and row 29. Now this is easy enough when you're up here and you can quickly see the intersect, but if you move way over to the screen, uh, it becomes more difficult to uh, look down the column and then look over at the row. So using the name box up here is a very useful way of finding out exactly which cell you're in. Okay, uh, so that covers cells. Next we're going to have a look at the name box. Okay, we referred to the name box just a few seconds ago and that's this area right up the corner just here. Now the name box has a couple of functions. The first one is to identify which cell you're in very quickly and very easily. And it has another really useful function which we'll come to later in the course. The next thing we're going to look at is how we actually move around the worksheet area. Now we have several options to do this. We can use the arrow keys, which you'll find on your keyboard, and look something like this. And obviously you can use the up arrow to move up one line at a time or the down arrow to move down one arrow at a time. Similarly, you can use the left arrow to move left and the right arrow to move right. Now, if we want to move around a little more than that, over to the far right hand side of the screen, you can see a scroll bar. That's this area just here. Now, at the scroll bar, you can either left click with your mouse and drag it down and up or you can use the little arrows at the top and the bottom. The bottom arrow, when you click it, will take you down one row at a time, and the up arrow will take you up one row at a time. Now, similarly, at the bottom right-hand side of the screen, we also have the left and right scroll bar, which is this scroll bar just here. And again, you can left-click and drag left or right to move left or right, or you can use the little arrows on the uh, right hand side moves you over one column at a time and on the left hand side you can move over one column to the left each time. Okay now Excel workbooks are, are called workbooks and just like a normal book a book has multiple pages and so can an Excel workbook. Now at the moment you can see that by default Excel, when we open this file, just gave us one sheet. In the olden days, in Excel 2003, possibly 2007 and 2010, we had three sheets by default, but at the moment in version 2013, we just get one sheet. That's this one just down here. Now you can see at the moment there is a little plus button at the side, so if we want to add another sheet to our workbook, we simply left click the plus button and we get sheet two and we can keep clicking this to get sheet three, four and five and that is simply how you add extra sheets to your workbook. Now at the moment you may not see the need for multiple sheets but it will become clear a little later on in the course as we progress. But for now let's just delete those sheets we've added by right clicking, choosing delete and we'll right click, delete, right click, delete, right click delete. There you go, and we're back to where we started. Now a very useful thing to know is how to save your work in Excel, and we're about to cover three different ways of saving your work. Okay, at the moment we have a workbook with no data in it whatsoever, so we'll go into the Quick Access Toolbar, just up here, you'll recall we looked at it a little bit earlier, and we'll click on the Save icon. So when we click this icon, this box will pop up. Now at the moment it says save as because we've not previously saved this file. So all we need to do is pick our path. I'm not going to use OneDrive. 
I'll go to computer I'll choose desktop and here this this med, this dialog box will ask us to pick a new name for our file so let's just call it something useful though my workbook isn't particularly useful we'll call it that uh, ignore the other options for a moment just name the file to something uh, that you can recall uh, hit save and there you go our file saved that's the first method the next method we'll use to save our work is using the ribbon that we spoke about a little earlier now if we move up to the top left you can see by default the home ribbon is displayed and right next to it on the left you can see the file ribbon now if you left click with your mouse button you'll come back to this area just here what you want to do is scroll down to save left click and there you go your work has now been saved and the final method for saving our work is to use the keyboard shortcut CTRL control button and S now you can see if we hover over the save option just up here in the quick access toolbar it will cleverly tell us in the tip box that control and S is the keyboard shortcut to save our work now you won't actually see anything happen when I do this but when I hit control and S that slight flash of the screen just indicated that Excel understood what we said and our work has just been saved. Next we're going to cover how to save as, that is renaming our workbook from one file name to a different one. Okay, save as has a couple of different functions. Now at the moment we've just saved this workbook as a workbook called my workbook now we, we it could be that we continue working on this but we actually want to keep the original file and keep the new file under a separate file name that way we can always go back to a previous version of our file if we find that something has gone horrendously wrong so now we're going to cover save as now again we have a couple of different ways of doing this the first one we'll use is the file menu so come up to the top left hand side left click file come down choose save as again specify your path I'm going to choose computer desktop and we'll get this little dialog box and we can see there that we already have my workbook the one we've just saved but this time what we're going to do is we're going to call this my workbook 2 which is a very creative name indeed again don't worry about any other options for now just change the name of the workbook and save as a different workbook now we still have my workbook the original version still intact all the data that we entered in there even though we didn't enter any data in there is still there and it's fully protected and will stay there until you delete it but now we've successfully renamed the file as my workbook 2 okay the next method we'll use to save as is the keyboard shortcut now because at the moment in the current view we can't see a save as option we can't hover over it and have Excel tell us in a tooltip what the keyboard shortcut is so at the moment I'm just going to let you know that the keyboard shortcut for save as is F12 and that's the function key on the top of your keyboard so if I hit F12 just now you'll see that we get the save as dialog box pop up and again we can just nip in here change the name of our worksheet ignore the other options for now click save and we've now successfully saved as a new workbook name okay the final thing I want to point out to you is you you may find that these cells are a little small um, it looks fine at the moment because the data is complete the, the, the spreadsheet is completely clear but uh, as we progress and we get lots and lots of data in here it could become difficult to read so if you look down to the right hand side of your screen you'll see a little slider with a minus button on the left and a plus button on the right now at the moment our view is 100 percent and we can see columns a through ac and we can see lines 1 to 39 down the side there now, if we want to zoom in to make the data a little bigger we can just left click on the plus button and you can see it tells us zoom in and that will make each of the cells a little bit larger you won't be able to see as many columns or rows but it may make the data a little easier to see now similarly you may want to zoom out just to see how big your data is and by left clicking this bar you'll come out and out probably to a point where you can't actually read the data anymore alternatively you can left click this little bar in the middle and either move to the left to zoom out or move to the right to zoom in 
And there you go, that should make it a little easier for you to see. Okay, there you have it. That's the detailed anatomy of a workbook. In the next short lecture, we're just going to have a couple of minutes just as a quick review. So if you ever need to come back to it in the future, just go to the short version and you'll quickly be able to find all the different areas of the workbook and what they're called. See you soon.